what is Red Bull going to do? Christian Horner has quite a job on his hands. It looks as though his team is sort of dwindling around him. We're gonna take a look at all of that today. Who's going where? what I think they can do, and how they're going to fill their buckets up in order to keep this team kind of running. So we know that Jonathan Wheatley is leaving for Audi. We also know that Adrian Newey is le uh, leaving the team, uh, possibly going to Austin Martin, although we're not quite sure. We're going to go through the rest of the team today, and we're going to do that with a lovely program that I love to use, and that program is Paint. Well, not Paint. This is Krita, which is like Paint Plus, basically. What we're going to take a look at today Today is this. This is the Red Bull general kind of management tree. Now keep in mind a lot of different teams run their teams much differently. The CEO and team principal don't always have to be the same person, nor does the designer and chief technical officer. Technical director on smaller teams is also the chief engineer. Sporting director doesn't even exist in some of the smaller teams. So this is specific to Red Bull. I've done a bit of research filled in the names that I know and who I think are sort of important and where we think people are going to go. So down at the bottom here are all the different engineers that run on a team. Keep in mind, these are head people. These are not all the engineers. There are many, 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 many people who work at the track and back at the factory. I think thousands. In Mercedes' case, more like 800 to 1200 in Red Bull's case, they run a bit of a leaner team. So we'll go through all of these and we'll take some people off the list that we know that are gone. So first of all, we will take Adrian Newey off the lists because we know he is leaving as well as Jonathan Wheatley. So these are pretty big guys and, and keep in mind, each one of these individuals, well, some of the lower ones, maybe not, but a lot of these individuals have decades at the team. Some of these guys have been here since the very beginning. Adrian Newey, 2006. Paul Monahan, uh, GP's here for, been here for a really long time. A whole bunch of them have been here for a great, great amount of time. The other biggest thing we want to keep in mind here is that Christian Horner and some other high-level execs have said that they do not want to hire from outside. We will also fill in Helmut Marco here in the advisor category. Although the way that that works now, he's not really technically advising anybody. It used to be that he used to advise Dietrich Mateschmitz, which is the German side of Red Bull. And then the Thai side of Red Bull seems to be more on Christian Horner's side of, uh, of advising. Red Bull is an F1 team is wholly indifferent to the actual drinks company. They may use them as advertising, but ultimately they're not really the same kind of team. Um, Christian Horner is not in charge of what a new Red Bull flavor tastes like, nor is the Red Bull flavor people in charge of how he runs an F1 team. Keeping all that in mind, who are all these individuals? Well, let us go down the list. Pierre Wache. Pierre Wache is the technical director currently right now. Been with the company for a very long time. Been mostly responsible for a lot of uh, the current dominance of Red Bull. Uh, he's been said by Christian Horner to be one of those main people, and he's been with them for a very long time, since 2013. Uh, we also have Paul Monahan, who has also been with the team for a very long time. He has also worked in Formula One for a very long time, since like the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I say when they don't really want to hire outside. There's no reason to poach when you already have a crazy amount of talent in the team. Ben Waterhouse, who has been with the outfit since 2014. He is the head performance engineer. We have GP, who's been with the team for quite a many years and worked with Daniel Kvyat at first and then moving in with Max Verstappen when he joined. We have Enrico Balbo, who is an Italian who's been with the outfit since uh, 2018, so not as long, but still he has been in Formula One since the early 2000s. And we have Craig Skinner, who is the aerodynamicist, and he joined Red Bull in 2006. So he's been there since the beginning as well. So let's go back to this chart. So the other person that we're also missing is the chief mechanic. The chief mechanic was Lee. So he was uh, the chief mechanic for, for Verstappen. Like each side of the garage has a chief mechanic. So he left in March to go to, and it was later found out, to go to Audi. So he was already at stake, and, and that particular position has been filled in by a person named Ghent. Chris Ghent. Uh, he filled in for uh, Lee Stevenson when he took uh, 
sort of sabbatical in 2020 to go work at the factory. He wanted to be around his family. Keep in mind, we've been doing these 20 plus races a season for quite some time now, and it's very hard on people, especially if you have family. Ghent replaced him then, and then uh, Stevenson came back to the grid and took over that uh, main mechanic role again, but now he is leaving to go work at Audi. Ghent is filling in him for him although I suspect fairly temporarily. So we have Ghent in here now, but we really don't know who's going to sit in that chief mechanic for Verstappen. And we're mostly keeping this around Verstappen because the team is mostly built around him. We have Hannah Schmidt. Hannah Schmidt is the race strategist. Um, if you ever take a look at Ferrari's memeing side of their race strategy and how bad they are, Hannah Schmidt is the polar opposite of that. Red Bull, on the whole, usually get their strategy very good. If you saw when they came in for the pits in Silverstone and how they aced both the times they came for the pits for Verstappen, um, that was all down to Hannah Schmidt. Now, she's excellent, and I think her talent could probably be in any one of these roles as well, because she is really that good. Um, the other person we don't know here, it's Paul Hart. He's down in the performance engineer. Uh, well, I guess we can talk about him for just a moment. So in Imola, we saw that Paul Hart was in Max Verstappen's ear for FP1 and one other race this year as well. Uh, and the reason for that was to give him more experience because Gian Piero Lambiasi was, is supposed to move into head race engineer rather than um, just race engineer for Max Verstappen. So he does multiple roles in the team and they really want to move him up. He has said that he wants to take on further roles and they want him to. So uh, Paul Hart was in, uh, not Paul Hart, Tom Hart was in Max Verstappen's ear for a couple of those. And you can see some of the fallout from that. So Max Verstappen is actually quite a hard person to uh, work with. He takes his job very seriously and he has no filter when it comes to telling you um, that you're not giving him the right information. Hart came over the radio and said you struggled in two sectors a little bit weak in Tulsa and Paratella and the world champion replied, yeah but what is weak? I understand I'm off but what's going on there? So he wanted more information and that's kind of the experience that uh, Tom needs with uh, Max Verstappen to get better at that. So uh, Tom's been with the team for a little bit. This is him. Uh, not that long though he's a performance engineer right now. We'll get into what some of those mean. The other person that we want to talk about is Richard Wood, Perez's race engineer. No, Hugh Bird is his race engineer and he was taken over by Richard Wood, Belgium. So you saw those uh, those people moving in there. So Richard Wood was in his ear and that would potentially free up Hugh Bird to do more work inside the team. So you can see it's been happening already. So we saw at Imola and we saw at Belgium that people lower down were getting more practice doing those other jobs inside of the team, right? So what ends up happening is that Newey going and John we uh, Jonathan Wheatley going and then losing the chief mechanic of Lee is kind of, they've already taken those steps to try to fill those positions and they're always kind of doing that, right? They're always trying to move people up. And, and that's very good from a company not just poaching from the outside. It's a very, um, it's a very integral inside is what's going on. So it's a very easy way to move people up through the team. It uh, really happens naturally. So what are some of these different positions here? So CEO, team principal, obviously Christian Horner. Chief Directing Officer and Designer, Adrian Yui. Technical Director, who is a person who would liaison between uh, the Chief Engineer and the Sporting Director to try to make sure everything lines up. So a lot of these middle management people are really liaisons and they're people who have to know lots about different disciplines in order to try to get things done within the team. The Sporting Director, if you heard in 2021 when we got to hear only, for only one year uh, the FIA and the teams yammering back at each other, Jonathan Wheatley was on that radio call a lot of the time. He sits on the pit wall. He's in charge of understanding rules and regulations within the sport. He's a liaison between the FIA. He's a liaison between the FOM as well. And he really is in charge of taking those rules and filtering them down to other people in that understanding. It's a very difficult job and there's only certain people that would be able to do that. You have to be kind of in the know all the time. It can't be people who are taking, it wouldn't be able to be Lee for instance. If you're taking like big sabbaticals from 
from the sport, you're really not going to be on top of things. You have to be, you can only be as good as the most recent information. So you really have to be on top of it year after year. So a chief engineer would be in charge of all the other engineers. And so if there's something going on with the engine that they think is really going to affect aerodynamics, the chief engineer would be in charge of um, talks between those two departments. They're very much babysitters when it comes to any of the chief people or, or chief tech, technical directors. They're babysitters. They try to get those people to move uh, efficiently together, not only to not fight with each other, which has happened in the past. If you ever look up some of Ferrari's past, the engine department and the car department sometimes didn't even talk to each other. And it was up to the team principal to try to get them to work closer together. This is a long time ago in the 90s, but um, they would not even speak with each other uh, because it was very much the sense that, oh, well, an engine has nothing to do with car, right? So um, the chief engineer would get those two departments or I mean, all the departments to work together. So the chief mechanic would be in charge of uh, the mechanics within the team. So if uh, an aerodynamic change is being made and the wing needs to be turned down out on the, on the car the chief mechanic would be in charge of um, not necessarily getting it done or telling those people to do it but he would be in charge of maybe the tool that is used to do it or the or how they do it specifically out uh, on the track like control engineers they are in charge of a lot of the brake bias clutch amounts uh, steering wheel drs operation seats Anything that has to do with control and operation of the car, they also are in charge pretty heavily on brakes, but they also work with aerodynamicists and with brake ducts and all that kind of stuff. So all of these kind of things flow and weave together. Uh, aerodynamic engineers, you can understand what they do. They are mostly to look at or improve the car when it comes to aerodynamics. They work very heavily with the designer, but it's really bringing those issues that are coming out from the race engineer, who is in charge of the driver, really, uh, trying to get that information flowed into what they think is going wrong with the car. Lead that into the technical director and designer and see those changes being made come back down and through the chain of command. They would also be in charge of high-vis paint and any of the aero rakes that are on the car that you see out there. They would be in charge of getting that all. Uh, we won't do engine engineers for Red Bull right now. We're going to talk about that in a second, but we'll go into the other three. So performance engineers are data analysis. If you see any of the stuff from f1.com or any of the uh, supporting kind of media where they look at uh, technical targets of what's going on as far as aero wash and uh, speed around corners, brake biases, all that kind of stuff. Performance engineers will take that data and really turn it into good information. A strategy engineer will work on weather, tires, uh, a lot of race strategy. I know that's kind of obvious, but uh, a lot of different kinds of race strategies. So if you ever hear uh, Ferrari going with plan H or whatever like that, that would be race strategy. So uh, Hannah Schmidt would be in charge of that. She's very good. And a race engineer will turn the information from the strategy engineers and the performance engineers into information that you can easily transfer to a driver. They want to be able to uh, communicate that very easily. Race engineers will also usually a lot of the uh, driver meetings. So if you have a, a meeting afterwards, the race engineers would speak for that side of the garage, uh, along with the chief mechanic, if you have one at the time. <laughs> so that's the team. That's uh, pretty much everybody. There's some other stuff, uh, as well as Helmut Marco being annoying throughout the entire thing. So what goes on here and the biggest parts we want to really look at some of these categories. So we got people to fill. It has been said out loud from higher ups that Pierre Wache will move into this position here. He's perfectly capable. His background isn't necessarily totally an aerodynamicist. He has a pretty big, wide berth of design attributes to him. But it seems like he's going to move into Adrian's position. That leaves a technical director open. Also pretty much nailed down. The GP is going to be up here. GP is going to go most likely become the sporting director. Keep in mind, the sporting director really has to be in the trenches day in and day out. And as GP has already kind of been looking to be head engineer of, of race operations, it would most likely be that he would move into uh, Jonathan Wheatley's position. Um, and I think he would do very well there, both supporting both new race engineers for the drivers 
and being able to be that sporting director. It's a, it's a position that if you do well, you can support the other departments as well. So it's much decided that Tim Hart will move in as Verstappen's engineer. And we think Hugh Bird will be freed up. Now we don't know where he will go. I'm not really sure. I don't know much about Hugh Bird. Tim Hart will move in, seeing as he's already done, as we uh, discussed before, he's already done some testing with Verstappen, and it looks like he'll move into that. And then Hugh Bird will be opened up, but we don't know what else is going on here. There's two big things and two big factors you have to keep in mind here. One, the Red Bull powertrains. This is currently being filled by Honda. When Honda was going to pull out, Red Bull was like, okay, we're gonna make our own engines. So Honda said, good, you borrow our engineers until you're done with that, and we'll keep the H on the car. Now Honda has won a championship since then, and it looks like Honda will stay in the sport. So they'll move to other teams. We don't know where just yet, but what it looks like is that this position will have to be filled with one of two different things. It will probably have to be filled by, we think, Ford. We'll have to put the people into this bucket. Keep in mind, you have to keep these buckets filled, right? So Ford will move people into these buckets. If they don't, and it's only kind of in name only, Red Bull will have to fill this. Now, having your own engine department you really need that integrated in the team. Ferrari taught us that this years and years ago when Ross Braun moved into Ferrari, one of his big things, aside from intertwine the engine and the car departments together, you don't want to have this department to be outside of this man's guys. He has to be in charge of that. He can't have another director inside of here because you'll get, it'll become too diverse there. You won't have the, the homologation of the whole team, right? So, so if Ford doesn't, enter into here as a complete partner where they're totally involved with that Red Bull power terrains, this is going to be have to fill. So this is just another department that before 2026 will need to be filled by Red Bull. It's not impossible. It's just another problem. We also don't know here. We don't know who, Re who Verstappen's chief mechanic is going to be. Now he's being filled in temporarily right now and it looks like um, that guy could probably stay there permanently but he's fairly inexperienced. And I'm gonna say fairly, some of these guys have been here for 20 years. You're looking at uh, Lee, the outgoing guy, had been here there for 18 years he'd been at Red Bull. So it's, it's you're replacing a guy who'd been there 18 years with a guy who's been there with, for three or four. You're never ever going to be able to fill that talent as much. We also need a new technical director. So we believe, or at least, I believe. So in, in, we believe that one of these two aerodynamics will move up here. It would really be, it would really be Ben Waterhouse that would move up there, right? But we've already pulled Tom Hart out of the performance engineer. So you can't really move him into a technical director because keep in mind, you've got to keep your buckets filled up. So if you're pulling lots out of there, so I don't believe he will move up. Instead, Craig Skinner. Craig Skinner is the blown diffuser guy from RB6 through RB9. That awful noise that those cars made with that blown diffuser rear wing, that was invented by this guy. And I think he'll be the new technical director. He obviously has a good mind. If you're coming up with a blown diffuser, which won Red Bull many, many of uh, Vettel's uh, championships, because he was integral at developing that, I think he'll move up there. But now we have both an aerodynamics department, a performance department, and an engine department, and a chief mechanic for Verstappen to fill. You got four real positions there. So this up here that they wanna do, this outside hiring that they wanna do, that's not going to happen. You're going to have to either very quickly develop some of these people in a hurry, or you're gonna have to poach from other teams. It's something you're just going to have to do. So it's really down to Christian Horner what he thinks he's gonna do here. And I think the biggest thing, filling up aerodynamic departments and performance departments, I'm sure you'll be able to get some people. You might be able to diversify some of these roles so that they can support those while they're low down. But keep in mind, we've got three big people going and a big paradigm shift in the way that they do engines as well. So um, there's lots of stuff for, for 2026. And I think for 2025, they're gonna take a big hurt because it's gonna be a transition year for them. Whereas you want your 2026 to be your transition year. You want that, it's a perfect time to train people because it's a new paradigm for the entire formula. It's a great time to move people around. 
That's why Audi is coming in at 2026, because everything changes. It's a bit of a reset. And these guys are going to have to do it a year before. So they're going to have a pre-reset and then an actual reset. And it's going to be really, really bad. I predict that Red Bull will be awful in 2025, because you're going to have so much of this change happening. As well, on top of that, you have a transition from Dietrich Mattersmiths. We don't know how well... Christian Horner is able to hold this all together as well. He's done well for many, many years, but that paradigm was different then. And I really think that uh, the team seems to be right now falling away. I want to know what you guys think though. In the comments below, let me know, did I get some of this wrong? Do we feel like different people are going to move in different spots as well? Subscribe if you're new. Throw me a like if you got a second and I'll see you guys next time.